Hi everyone, this is Mr. Campania. I have a question for you. What happens when you change the number of neutrons in an atom? Today's lesson objective, we will identify similarities and differences among isotopes of the same element, and we will explain the connection between isotopes and atomic weight. So the nuclei of atoms contain protons and neutrons, while electron clouds surrounding the nuclei contain the electrons. The positively charged protons are very close together in the atomic nucleus, and the repulsive force of the charges is tremendous. The strong force is a type of interaction that binds together protons and neutrons. Without the strong force, the positively charged protons would blow the nucleus apart. Until 1932, the positively charged nucleus of an atom was known to exist, but it was believed to contain only protons. The nucleus was known to be surrounded by enough negatively charged electrons to make the atom electrically neutral. Most of the atom was empty space, with its mass concentrated in tiny nucleus. Twelve years earlier, Lord Ernest Rutherford, a pioneer in atomic structure, has postulated the existence of a third, neutral, subatomic particle with the approximate mass of a proton that could result from the capture of an electron by a proton. This postulation stimulated a search for the particle. However, its electrical neutrality complicated the search because almost all experimental techniques of this period measured charged particles. James Chadwick bombarded hydrogen atoms and paraffin with beryllium emissions. By comparing the energies of recoiling charged particles from different targets, he proved that the beryllium emissions contain a neutral component with a mass approximately equal to that of a proton. He called it the neutron in a paper published in 1932. Although the hydrogen nucleus consists of a single proton, the nuclei of all other elements contain both neutrons and protons. The different types of nuclei are referred to as nuclides. The number of protons in a nucleus is called the atomic number and is designated by the symbol Z. The total number of nucleons, neutrons and protons, is designated by the symbol A and is called the mass number. What do A and Z represent? Pause the video, fill this in. So a nuclide with seven protons and eight neutrons thus has a Z of seven and an A of 15. Remember the Z represents the number of protons, the Z represents the atomic number, the Z represents which element it is. Those are all the same thing. And A represents the mass number, which is just the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons, N, is N equals A minus Z. To specify a given nuclide, we need give only A and Z. These can be shown in a complete nuclear symbol, which takes the form where X is the chemical symbol for the element, A is the mass number, and Z is the atomic number. For example, a nitrogen nucleus containing seven protons and eight neutrons would be, the symbol here, 15 over seven, N. Since all nitrogen atoms have seven protons in their nucleus, sometimes a seven is emitted, and the symbol is written simply as nitrogen 15. The same nucleotide is also sometimes written as nitrogen 15. The identity of an atom is determined by the number of protons in the nucleus. All hydrogen atoms must have exactly one proton in the nucleus. The number of neutrons in the nuclei of the atoms of a particular element, however, may vary. For example, a hydrogen atom will always have one proton, but it may have zero, one, or two neutrons in the nucleus. As long as it has one proton, it is a hydrogen atom. So pause the video and answer the following question. What do you know about the number of protons and neutrons in an atom of a given element? Now, nuclei that have the same number of protons in the nucleus, but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. Now, hydrogen has three different isotopes. One isotope of hydrogen has one proton and zero neutrons in the nucleus, so it has a mass number of one. Another isotope of hydrogen has one proton and one neutron in the nucleus, so it has a mass number of two. A third isotope of hydrogen has one proton 
and two neutrons in the nucleus, so it has a mass number of three. The isotope of hydrogen with a mass number of two is sometimes called deuterium, and the isotope of hydrogen with a mass number of three is sometimes called tritium. But remember, they're all hydrogen. Now, just like hydrogen, carbon has some isotopes too. In fact, carbon has six of them. Carbon 11, carbon 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. The isotopes of a given element are not all equally abundant. For example, 98.9% .9 of all naturally occurring carbon is carbon 12, and about 1.1% is carbon 13. The other isotopes of carbon are even less abundant. The periodic table is a complete listing of all known elements. Each element has its own square in the periodic table. The square contains the chemical symbol for the element, the atomic number, and the atomic weight. The atomic weight of an element is the weighted average of all its isotopes. So here's an example. The element boron consists of two isotopes, boron-10 and boron-11. The abundance of boron-10 is 20%, and the abundance of boron-11 is 80%. What is the atomic weight of boron? Pause the video now if you want to try it independently. Keep watching if you want a hint. The atomic weight of an atom can be found by multiplying the abundance of an isotope of an element by the atomic mass of the element and then adding the results together. This equation can be used with elements with two or more isotopes. All right, so here's your answer. The atomic weight equals 0 0.20 times 10 AMU. That's 20% of our isotope of 10 plus 80% of our isotope of 11. That's going to give you two plus 8.8, .8, giving you 10.8 AMU. Well, I'd say we're well on our way to understanding modern physics a little bit better. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.